You know, sometimes just a few words can really speak volumes, like these three, mac and cheese. I'm telling you, what else can you possibly say about it? You know it, you love it, you want it right now, especially if it's the ultimate. All right, so we got about a quart of milk. It'll be plenty to hold the whole sauce together. All right, then we're gonna take a couple of cloves of garlic and throw them straight in, paper and everything, because I just want to infuse the flavor. We're gonna strain every bit of this out. All right, just throw that in. And then we're gonna take some fresh thyme and we're gonna throw it into the milk as well. It's gonna be really simple, but it's a rich flavor. All right, so we got some herbs and some garlic. Then we're gonna take a half a stick of butter. All right, we're gonna throw it right into our big pot here. And like I said before, this is gonna be the base for the roux. And you know what I'm talking about. It's flour and butter mixed together. All right, and it's gonna be the binder, which is gonna hold the sauce together. So this infuses and starts to melt. We're gonna take our pot here. We're gonna make our roux. That's a fancy word. I'm gonna sprinkle some flour right on top, about two tablespoons. And at this point, I usually kind of eyeball it so the roux is kind of a certain like consistency. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. I'm gonna stir this whole thing together and I'm gonna drop the temperature down. I don't want any color on this. I wanna leave this as blonde as possible. All right, stir it in. It's gonna look like wet sand. It's gonna smell like popcorn. Classically, uh, this is called a, a bechamel, which is a just basically like a milk gravy. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna strain out our milk into our roux. All right, and because you know both are relatively hot, you just have to kind of do it in one big shot like this. Okay, dump the whole thing in. I'm telling you, milk and thyme and garlic smells delicious. Almost got like a little kind of clam chowder thing going on. It smells fantastic. All right, I'm gonna stir this together. All right, and this is gonna start to thicken as the roux, as the flour and butter starts to react with the temperature of the liquid. Now at this point, if you see a couple of lumps in the bottom of this, don't panic. All right, I get to just grab a whisk. I'm just come in and give it a little stir. All right, and all of like the lumps will start to break apart and the sauce will start to thicken itself. All right, it just takes a couple of minutes. We're turning the temperature up just a little bit. All right, perfect. All right, so take the cheese, fold this in. All right, and one, two, three shot, you got a really beautiful cheese sauce, right? Now in classic French kitchens, this would be considered a Mornay sauce at this point, right? All right, so we're gonna stir this together, let it start to thicken. Look at that, it just takes two seconds, you get this really beautiful sauce, all right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, all right, some salt and pepper, we're gonna season it up, like that. And voila, you got the base for the ultimate macaroni and cheese. All right, so we got that. Okay, our elbow macaroni is simmering away over here in the corner. I'm gonna take this. Now it's really important at this point, you don't wanna overcook all right, your pasta because it's gonna bake off in the oven. All right, it's just al dente. Because if not, it's really gonna be a little mushy when it comes out. Okay, so we got the macaroni here, right? All right, that's gonna get folded into our beautiful cheese sauce. All right, that's gonna get stirred together. I mean, how kid friendly is this? All right. So, this is great. I like a little bit of color in mine, so I'm going to add some parsley. All right, just a little bit of green stuff. Now, if your kids are opposed to anything green, and I, I get it, I understand. Uh, you certainly don't have to do this, but I just think the flavor is really great. I'm just going to roll it up in a tight little bundle. Just give it a quick little chop. One, two, three. All right, that's going to get folded into the sauce itself. All right, and that's it for the most part. It's all about the great technique and the little simple sauce, and you've got a, a fantastic macaroni and cheese. Now, it's a little loose right now, but you want that because when the pasta cooks, it's going to swell a little more, right? It's better to have a little loose at this point than too tight because then it would actually make a dry macaroni. All right, so we've got a baking dish. I'll take this. All right. I was going to go into the baking dish, one, two, three, just like that. All right, then I'll take the other half of the Vermont white cheddar cheese and we're going to bake this for, for about a half an hour right until it gets really bubbly and there's a nice golden crust on top of it all right almost to the point where you can crack the crust with a spoon really great perfect macaroni and cheese all right it's going to go into the oven see you later alligator i'm going to garnish it up right with some great flavors i've got a little bit of bacon here all right bacon some onions all right a little bit of garlic some thyme, it's gonna scatter it right on top. Rustic and beautiful. It's great for a big meal. Pick your corner and then go in deep. Now, now take a look at this, that's great. Now that, my friend, is the ultimate macaroni and cheese.